Hello everyone, it's M4J here and welcome back to the new M4J network or just the M4J network here on OpenTTD. We have slowly been building up our little logistics network down here in the southwest corner of the map by Sanley. Um, and in the last episode we built the Express Metro system of which there are now uh, three lines fully populated. They all run through this stop here. So you can see we've already got 23 vehicles running through here. I believe it's two lots of eight and a, uh, one lot of seven um, sets of vehicles. There will be extensions to this in the future. Up here at, uh, where is it? Kef Kenfingway. I've got ideas for an extension through Wentborough, through Cornford, up to Preening Hall. I also wanted to uh, span out maybe up this way as well, although how we're going to do that from Sanley, I don't know. We might end up building a new avenue out this way, tunnel under the bay, kind of like what we've done uh, over here, in fact. So maybe that becomes a thing. We'll see. But yeah, it spans out quite a long way. It comes down here to Sledingham Quay, all the way over to uh, that bridge. And again, could extend down into Plinthing Bridge, Pleddingston Bay and Fluntown. Uh, some of these town names, man. I was trying to explain to my partner these town names um, while she was laughing at me. So, um, yeah. To, uh, to someone outside of the game, the town names in this game are really, really weird. Um, we could also, from that bridge here, extend north and head into this area and somehow cover all of these. We'll come to that. Now, you might notice some scars on the landscape. This one here is a good example. Between episodes, I did as I promised. I went and added some new... Um, junctions to the motorway so this is one here on the m14 as it's now called and i put the waypoints in uh, and set them all up so we are now ready to go with trucking which is what today's episode is mostly about there will be a little bit of shipping involved as well and another thing that i did um where are we up this way i connected up this iron ore mine uh, which is Broadhead Iron Ore Mine, or Broadhead Iron Ore Mine, or IOM, uh, somewhere, there it is, IOM. There's also a couple of coal mines that we're going to connect up today as well, haven't done that yet. Down here, I built a new B road between Pleddingston Bay and Guarding Head, and this will actually be used by buses, coaches, all sorts of things, but predominantly it will be used by uh, trucks. So we've got, you know, things like a sawmill, plastics plant, uh, furniture factory, all those kind of things. We've also got a, a clay pit. I was about to say dredging site, but that's in the water. Uh, we've got a clay pit, which is going to be hooked up as well. There is a farm here. Potentially that could be useful. And a textile mill, which I think will also be potentially useful. Um, and they've got good connections to the, to the motorway here. In fact, that's not the motorway. That's the A road, which I believe is the A141. Yes. Um... Where was I going with this? It was something really, really useful, I'm sure. Uh, oh, yeah. So we can get our first logistics chain set up. So I have this steel mill here that's currently under construction. And this is going to be predominantly what we're going to focus on first. So we've got this steel mill here. We have ourselves an iron ore mine up here. And again, you can see I've built a motorway junction here. There may even be another one over here. And in fact, the M14, which is uh, this main road here, will end at this junction here. And a new one will form that will uh, probably head up the west coast. And uh, there will be a big junction here where a, a road will also... A line. A road will also go into Broadhead. And there may even be one up north here to Frontpool. And I kind of want to start linking up some of these towns with roads as well as rail. But yeah. Let's, uh, let's get started with the main part of uh, the video today then, which is hooking up the steel industry. The plan is we've got an iron ore mine here. There is a coal mine here at Nuthead, which I think would be a good candidate to connect up. We then have a steel mill down here at that bridge. And then somewhere, trying to remember where it is, it's in one of the towns. Is it in Guardinghead? Yes. Uh, there is a machine shop which will turn that metal plus some petrol into farm supplies and engineering supplies. These engineering supplies can then be taken back to the coal mine and the iron ore mine and will increase production. Um, you may also notice oil wells there and oil rig. 
There is in fact an oil rig just off the coast here and there are several uh, all the way along the coast. We are going to trim these down. We're going to focus on having like one, maybe two per industry chain, possibly. Um, but yeah, the plan would be to use this one here and maybe this one over here. Boat it in here to Pleddingston, sorry, Funtown Port. Stick it on a truck. And then um, from, uh, from here, we will truck it into... Where are we? The freight terminal here, and then, uh, so not, not to here, sorry, over here at the oil terminal where it will be turned into petrol, and then that petrol will also get taken down into guarding head, turned into uh, more engineering supplies, and then redistributed across the network. Eventually, that job will be done by a train, but right now we don't have trains running on the network because we're still setting up timetables and. Um, uh srts and things like that so right now that's a no-go so that truck is the better alternative um and we have the main roads in place it's kind of an accident actually that i mean the steel mill is one that i funded myself you might notice as i said it's still under construction but uh, everything else is pretty much as it was placed um i am going to look quickly on the map to see how many more coal mines there are in this area because i would like to hook up uh, it says disable all. We want coal mines. Oops, not dairies. Coal mines. There aren't actually that many. There's one over here near Sanley. Then there's the Nudhead one. But otherwise, there aren't that many in this area. So we might have to do some um, some funding. See if we can get some more in uh, and around the area. I am going to hook up the two that are already in situ, though, because I think that these would be. Um, good to get started with they're kind of close together but they will have separate lines the plan is also to have these delivered to the freight terminal and then from the freight terminal have another set of trucks that then bring it down or a single set of trucks that bring it down to the steel mill and then from the steel mill the metal will be taken back to the freight terminal and then from the freight terminal onwards and it just means you've got lots of raw industry or raw product being brought in raw product being taken out processed product being brought in and then processed product being taken out and it means when, when you add the trains to this as well um, things will run a little bit smoother there is scope I suppose to take um, things directly from one industry to another were someone else to come in and start running these things themselves they're more than welcome to do that this is just how I'm choosing to do it now I'm going to keep this pinned up in the top corner here so I don't lose it because it's the only one that I can't remember exactly where it is. But otherwise, I'm going to start connecting up these uh, these coal mines and then we'll, uh, we'll get going with our first uh, mineral lines in this area. Okay then, so we've got two coal mines and two iron ore mines connected. And just to remind you, we've got Nudhead over here, we've got uh, Deffing Bridge up here, and then for the iron ore mines, we've got Broadhead here, and then the new one that I've just built, which is over here at Floofing Bridge. And again, I'm just going to pin that one so I remember where it is. Now we need a logistical hub for this part of the, um, the network. It's kind of like a truck depot, I suppose. Um, trying to think where would be a good place to build it and one place that springs to mind is somewhere around the freight terminal but not too close to it now we could just build it down here and connect it to this B road and the more I say that actually the more I do indeed like that idea so I think up here would be a good place for it um, let's build a junction there I'm going to use unpay. Actually, are we? No, we'll use concrete for this, I think. I think concrete will work well. Um, we could have it up a hill, down a hill, all that kind of stuff. But I think, let's be honest, it's probably going to be simpler if we just did this. 
and have this as our hub. Now this is going to be used again for scheduled dispatch and things like that. So we are going to make it fairly big. Something else I forgot to mention was over at Sanley. Um, I did extend the tram depot and you can already see part of the problem. These double um, tile stops are really useful because they can actually fit a Jubilee and a Metro link in them. But unfortunately, if you have two Jubilees, you end up with something like this. Or if, yeah, you can, actually you can see there where it's gone a little bit wrong. Which is kind of annoying, but I don't know if there's a way to fix that without separating the depots. And I don't know if I could be bothered right now to separate the depots. So we're going to just ignore that for now and pretend it doesn't exist. Now I'm going to build probably a double string of depots like this. There we go. This one at the bottom here is going to be empty. That's going to be used for um, vehicles leaving. And then I'm going to pop you there like that. And then here we're going to go down the line like so. And then here we're going to go down the line like so. Now we're going to call this that bridge a logistics depot. There we are. And I think we're ready to go. Oh, one more thing. A waypoint at the entrance here as well. Now, some of these waypoints are just here for speed limit purposes. So in this case, it'll be to slow the vehicles down to 10 miles an hour. Predominantly, I'm gonna be using the roads themselves as the speed limit setters. So you can see, excuse me, motorway, unlimited. A road 60, B roads 40, town roads 30, and so on and so on and so on. But concrete roads are 30 miles an hour, and I like to have um, uh, my vehicles run at 10 in and around depots at maximum of 10, sometimes even 5, which could be what I end up doing here as well, to be honest. So because of that, we are going to, uh, to use waypoints to control the speeds. Now, we need to set up some vehicles. First of all, then, let's go for the coal. So we're going to go cargo types here. We're going to set it to coal. I'm also going to go to introduction date there just to make sure that we are buying vehicles that are realistic for the time period that we are in. Now, of course, the M4J network is set sort of around 1994-ish, just after the opening of the Channel Tunnel, which doesn't exist in this, but it means we can use the Eurostars. Um, so that's 1982. These are tempting because they go 57 miles an hour and they hold a lot of stuff. But I think that's a little too unrealistic for what we're trying to do here. What I really want is something that's 93. I want something that isn't just a truck like this for the coal. I want to be able to see the coal in the back. And the more I think about it, the more I'm starting to think that might not actually be possible. Uh, what are you, Ford Cargo? And you carry basically nothing. So we might have to go. I don't actually know how these would have carried coal back then. It doesn't seem very realistic to me. 10,000 kilograms of coal, 1967. What if I set it to iron ore? Basically the same stuff, isn't it? Yeah. 86. I mean, that could work. These ones here. For what we're trying to do here. So you've got the E series and the C series, which is a little bit smaller by the looks of things. Improve it introduced an improved cab design and several chassis improvements. Whereas this one, it sold widely in the UK and Cummings engined models had a distinctive exhaust note. Well I like the sound of a distinctive exhaust note. So maybe we'll go for this then. Now you are carrying coal. Now here we go, this is where the fun begins. So we're going to set you like this and we're going to set you like this. We're then going to set you twice like this and this is basically our um, how everything's going to operate here. At this point it will be different depending on which vehicles we are using. So we really want to get this truck to the main road as quickly as possible. Now technically it's going to be heading west, I've just realized there's a con one there as well that I could have connected up, never mind. I don't think that one was showing on the map. I couldn't see it before. 
Um, so yeah, we're heading west here, so you would think going through Barfingborn Bridge would be the fastest way to go. But actually, the B roads here, was it 40 miles an hour speed limit? Um, and then it gets onto the main road here quicker. So I'm actually going to bring this truck this way. So we're going to go through Pleddingston Bay Carousel, through Plinfing Bridge Road. Technically, that's Plinfing Bridge Road Interchange, but I've just called it Plinfing Bridge Road. You can see I've got the, the um, road names here as well, and then whether it's coming in from the north or the south, or the east or the west in some cases. And at this point, we join the A141. Uh, now, I probably don't have to do this for every set of waypoints here, but I am going to just to keep things simple for me. Uh, now, at this point, we turn north. Yep. And this is where we join the M141, which takes us up past our final destination, actually, funny enough. Um, into here. Ah. Yes, now here we do actually separate. So I'm going to do this separately because we're going to go through here up to this junction here and then down onto this road here, which does require... I have checked this, believe it or not, and I believe it is possible to go from one to the other. Uh, it's down. I'm sure I checked this. Maybe I didn't check this properly because I'm not seeing a way to double back. I could have sworn I checked this. Maybe it's this one that's wrong. No, that one's right. Oh, I think I one wayed these when they shouldn't have been one ways. I think that's what I did wrong. So I will un one way these roads. And I guess this one as well. Although that one probably would have worked. This one here isn't a one wayer, it's a two way road. It kind of gets weird here because it makes it look like the slip road here is the actual main bit, but it isn't, it's that one. It's it's messy, but it's fine. Uh, right. So yeah, we go there. Then we loop round again to go there. We go down Power Way. We go there. We go there. We go under the bay here. There and there. And then at this point here, we come up to here, into here, into here. Vehicles can't go to that station. There are no stops with a compatible road tram type. Excuse me. Do these not work? Maybe I'm going to have to convert it like this. That'll be annoying. Because I have a few of these then that I'm going to have to change. Yeah, I guess it doesn't work. Okay. So from the coal mine, we come back out here. We go through there, through there, through there, under the bay, to there, to there, over to here, where we go there and there. And this is also one that I thought I checked. Yeah, so we do loop around this way, and then, yeah, it becomes uh, accessible. And then we get to here, and at this point, we go to the freight terminal there and then we come out and then we go back so I think this is all set up and ready to uh, the speed limit and everything so if I grab you over here for now just to check that everything does in fact work over here at Chardingham you just need to unload because you're not going anywhere else I don't think we have any places now where we have to do a non-stop via and to be honest I could probably go back to Sandy and switch out that um, tram one, because I think trams have waypoints now as well. I'm probably not going to do that right now, though, because that sounds like effort. Uh, but yeah, Deffing Bridge Coal Mine to Chardingham Freight Terminal, and then you go back to the depot, which I wish it didn't have to do, but it, yeah, there's no way around that that I can think of right now. No one's mentioned anything in the comments yet, so I guess that's, that's that. Right, in terms of stop times then, I think I'm going to say like 15 minutes for each of these, but obviously there it's just going to be one. 
Um, here, I'm going to say maybe 30. Maybe 30. And then uh, loading 15 minutes, unloading 15 minutes. That one could probably be more like, I don't know, 10. Maybe even 5. In fact, to be honest, the loading one probably doesn't even need to be that long. That could also be 10. There's nowhere else where we stop. This one over here, then I'm going to make it 15. These numbers are all subject to change, but right now it's just easier to do this. Um, also, you might just hear some clanking bottles here because I'm going to move. I drink a lot of drinks out of bowls, and every now and then I, I have a collection that I have to get rid of, and they all block my screen. So bear with me just one second. Again, the missus is probably not going to like me doing this, but there you go. Alrighty. Speed limits. What's the top speed of this vehicle? It is uh, 56. So yeah, we're just going to do 56. I mean, we might as well do 60. But in and around terminals and depots and things like that. Uh, I was at the top then, but I'm not. It's going to be 10. 10's fine. We could do 5, but 10's fine. Right, so at the approach, da, 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 and then when we come down to the coal mine, there it is. Slow down to 10. Slow down to 10. And then um, over here, yeah, also slow down to 10. So actually, I managed to accidentally get the right one there. And then uh, over here, slow down to 10. Right, this one is ready now to be auto-filled. So we're going to do that. We're then going to grab the next one, which is this one. And I'm basically going to copy the orders from this one. But when we get to... Uh, where's the other coal mine? It's over there, isn't it, at Nudhead? So when we get to... Order number 17. And then it was 29, but now it's not. There we go. Uh, my, my lexicon there, absolutely staggering. Um, so yeah, here it's going to come up. And then it's going to go... Oh, I've got to convert this now as well. I'm actually a little annoyed that it doesn't work on those but at the same time I kind of like the fact that it doesn't work on those roads because I guess that's somewhat realistic you know you wouldn't expect an 18 wheeler truck to be able to negotiate muddy roads effectively so yeah that actually is kind of realistic I, I I hate it but I love it right lock you you're 10 minutes loading aren't you so this one here is gonna be 10 minutes loading and then we're going to lock you. This is going to be 60, 10, 10, and 60 there already. Excellent. So these can now be pinned. Awesome. Auto fill. Now we can start doing the iron ore. So let's pretend that the iron ore trucks are going to be done. Um, Actually, no, we've got one more to do here. So your capacity is 20,000 kilograms of coal. So ideally, we need something that can carry just as much of, as that, if not more. You can carry 18,000, 30,000. I mean, 30,000 is not the worst, but you're actually beyond where we need to be. You're 96. So we could go with so it was the E series we were using, wasn't it? Um, I mean, we could just run twice as many trucks. That's a possibility as well. We got to bear in mind that we're going to be carrying iron ore as well. Actually, the fact that we are going to be carrying iron ore as well makes me want to just do it direct for these in future we will have um, vehicles that run 
to the freight terminal as well. But I think right now that does seem a little bit stupid. So I'm going to undo that. And then when we get to the bottom here, uh, from the carousel, which is number 42, correct? Yes. So before you go and un uh, and go back to your depot there, you are actually going to come here, unload, and then go back to your depot. And that makes, to me, more sense. There we go. Unload, leave empty. And then if we go back to the schedule here, we can go 60. Can you lock it in speed limits as well? I guess you can, but why would you want to? Uh, unloading here, we said five minutes, didn't we? I'm just going to lock you in like so. And then the approach is in and out. Yeah, do 10, 10, and then you're already set up. Excellent. Right, so I'm going to do the same thing with this second coal. And then we're going to go back into time lapse to do the iron ore ones, because I think you get the gist by now. Um, and then, yeah, from, from there, we will start looking at uh, what we're going to do with the steel. And then we might even start looking at what we're going to do with the oil as well. Right, so number 35, we're going to go here, here, here. You're going to be unload, leave empty. Good stuff. Scroll right the way down here. You are going to be at five minutes. Pin. 60. 10. And 10. The autofill is still on, so that's good. Okay, so now I'm going to set up the iron ore ones quickly, and then we'll go back and, uh, and like I said, we'll start talking about the uh, the steel and things like that. Okay, that's all scheduled up and good to go. Um, I think I'm going to check this one quickly because I may have goofed a bit on the 17, 18, 19. Nope, that's all good. Um, you might see I had to change something just now when I was doing the other one because for some reason I've got the orders in the wrong order. Yeah. Anyway, so that's all set up. Now we've got uh, 38,000 kilograms, up to 38,000 kilograms or 38 tons of iron ore that's going to be arriving. And we've got 40 tons of um, coal. Now I think the way this works, it produces, yeah, three tons per eight tons of iron ore delivered. So if I do my maths in my head, uh, that will be five lots of that so it's gonna be five lots of that which is 15 tons i believe per 40 tons of iron ore delivered and then it's going to be per 40 tons of coal delivered it's going to be um 10 tons of metal now because we're not delivering 40 we're delivering 19 per did i say that right hang on so it's gonna be 38 yeah it's gonna be 38 instead but we're delivering 19 oh man why couldn't this be divisible i was going to do the maths in my head and work out how much metal is going to be delivered maybe i'll just switch these out for um for the, the normal ones again but then i i want to have some variety running around here even though they're all the same color there might be a way to change that actually but i don't know um yeah, I was going to go into factorio mode and try and do the math. So let's say... I mean, we could basically do the math. You can say it's 16 instead of 19. And then... Uh, so it'd be 16 tons of iron ore, which means 6 tons of metal there. And then that's still going to be 15 tons. Um, no, sorry, 10 tons. 
uh, because it's going to be, oh man, two lots of five. Yeah, so it's going to be 10 tons there, plus the um, six tons there, so 16 tons. So if I had something that can carry 16,000 kilograms of metal, we should be laughing. And again, I don't know if we have like a flatbed that we can just stick things on. Is there really a truck called a Leyland Beaver? I wouldn't want to, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't really want to be involved with that. Uh, we could go with capacity and work backwards. Because these, that's 24,000. It's from 1935 though, so it's a little old. Uh, what have we got up here? The Badger, 20,000. You're from 36. 18,000 from 64. That's a good one. The Guide Big J6. Designed for motorway operation, this Guide Big J featured a high revving Cummings engine. This is the rigid version. Okay, or well, there's a Leyland Octopus. Or well, there's a Foden S21, which sounds like a football reference, but it's not. These are all 18,000. We can go back to the 16,000 here with the Foden S20. Top speed of only 43, though, so you're a little on the slow side. As is that one, actually. This one goes 53. That one goes 48. I think we're going to go for this one here, the guy Big J6. Even though it's 18,000, that actually does work with the, uh, the tolerances that I've given myself here. So I think we're going to go for this. And we're going to set you up. So we're going to pop you there. You're going to go here, 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 here. Obviously, that's going to be service. This is going to be no loading. No, whoops, wrong one. Uh, no loading, no unloading. I think I've done that for this as well. All right, yep, good. They're all copied, so that means that's fine. And then from here, you're going to head over to here and then from here you're going to I close you uh, guarding head machine shop which is over here we're gonna have to go through Lindum to get to it now where are you in the grand scheme of things oh you're just up the road actually so we don't have to go through Lindum that's actually I'm okay with that that's fine so yeah, uh, after number six, which is where we're at, we're going to come over here. We're going to go through probably the, maybe the southern entrance. I think the southern is going to be easier, like so. And then to one of these stops. There we are. And here you're going to unload and leave empty. Now we could at this point double up and say here is where you refit. Uh, and you will carry uh, oh, duh, 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 engineering supplies from here. But I think right now I'm just going to not bother with that. And you're going to carry metal. There we go. Now if we go to timetable, pin you like so. You then are going to be a stop time of... We're going to set it for... Uh, actually, what are we? No, we're not going to do that. Because they're all different times. So you're going to be one... You're going to be 15. You're going to be 10. Because again, I think 10 minutes. It's probably going to be, in real life, it's going to be closer to like an hour. But right now, 10 feels like a better number just to get things moving. I really am looking forward to watching all of my roads here covered, swarming, some might say, with, um, with trucks. I think that's going to be really cool. Let's, uh, let's do this one as well then. So we're going to set you 10 10. We're going to load up there. And then basically, anytime it says approach, I'm going to change the speed limit. So you're actually going to be running. Also, I've got you at 60 right now, but the top speed of you is 53. I guess 60 is the next best thing. Trucks in the UK are limited to 56 miles per hour. I think that's because it, it's something else in kilometers an hour. Let me just do the maths on that one quickly. Uh, so was it 56 divided by 5 times 8? Yeah, 90 Ks. It's 89 point something, but that's basically 90 Ks, which makes sense. 
Um, I had a complete brain fart then. Yeah, you're 10. You're 10. And then down here, you're 10. Uh, so yeah, 60 is fine. That's what I was trying to say there before I had my brain fart. Okay, so you're set to autofill. And then finally, we're going to be carrying the engineering supplies. Now for this one, again, if I do the maths, so per eight tons of metal delivered, you're going to be creating eight crates. So I think, I think we could probably do this in twos. So you're going to be bringing in 16 tons at least. Like it goes up to 18 tons, but let's say 16 again for argument's sake. So you're going to be producing 16 crates of engineering supplies per eight tons, uh, per delivery. You need 21 crates to double your production. But that I'm not interested in if we're running a schedule. So I I think here I was gonna have one truck that served the two But then there are three here all near each other. And that could work. Or we just do one each. Because the other option of course is we have um from guarding head here we just go up to the freight terminal and then distribute from there and that might actually be what I end up doing here that makes sense to me so I think that is what I'm gonna do so 16 crates here is absolutely fine because that's actually I might go a little bit bigger with these if I could do so that would be 18 if I could do 24 but still be within the realms of, um, how are you 12? You get bigger. You're 97. So you only go 28 miles an hour. So yeah, we're kind of falling into some traps here. So you're 30 crates, 1964, 56 miles per hour. So you're actually, you'd work. You would work, but you're maybe too big. Because we are going to be using the main roads here. What about the Albion? 14 crates. You are refittable. Or we could just go with the Foden Alpha. 23 crates. So it's basically 24. Um, 56 miles an hour. Oh, yeah, 97. That was the problem, wasn't it? Oh, man. This is... this. The whole time period thing. It's great and it's also terrible. So we could use this and try and keep to actually this could work if we used B roads so if we went from guarding ahead here up through into Lindum and then if I built a B road here that runs into um, Barfingborn Bridge and then we went this way and then through the, all of this that would work and I think that is what I'm going to do Maybe. Although we do need... We do need bigger. We need 96, 87. You hold 30 crates. These are the really big ones, but... Well, you are... You are in time range. 1990. I might go with this one, then. We'll buy big. And we'll spread it that it, it should work better, I guess. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Right, we're going to do you. We're going to get rid of the steel mill approach. We're going to get rid of that one, that one, that one. We're going to remove the unload there. Like so. And then from the machine shop, we are going to run you from... I think what we'll do here, because we don't want all of these roads here, because that's going to be a massive pain in the backside. So 
We want just one road connection. I mean, this sounds dumb. And if I did this in City Skylines, people would scream at me in the comments. But we want one road connection, really, between towns, if we can help it. Um, now, where would I build this one? Over here could be smart. So if I was to do this... And again, I'm going to use waypoints for this. It's probably not needed. But I'm going to do it anyway. Because why not? So yeah, we're going to come in like this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Now I'm going to build a waypoint here. Like so. I'm then going to come over here. Uh, and it's actually going to be this road here. That is going to be used. You are going to be our B road into um, the next town over. And we're going to do this. We're also going to do that. And we're going to do this. Because we might, might as well just have a little bypass road as well. That works. I'm also realizing that in terms of time frames, probably not going to have time to do the, uh, the oil today. But I might as well explain to you how I'm going to do it. And then, yeah, you'll know. So let's do this. And then we'll put another waypoint like here. Also gives a reason for this to exist, which is nice. And in fact, already I'm going to remove that. And I'm going to stick the waypoint there. Because why not? So uh, this one here. You are Lindum to Guarding Head. So I don't know. Guarding Head Road or something I'll call it. Like so, and then this one over here, we'll just call you Linden Way. Okay, let's get you back. So, from the machine shop, you're going to come out to the north, like this. You're then going to run through here twice through here twice and at this point I think you should be able to find your own way but I'm going to build road connection there road connection there and a road connection here just to make sure there we go um, so from Linden way going to be up and over the hills and into here and then to here. Now on the way back, when you get to, actually that might be all fine. Looking at it, you'll come through here and then round these roads and off. And yeah, actually I think that is fine. So freight terminal, unload. Excellent set you up over here then so pretty much everything is what it needs to be except this one here needs to be 10 the freight terminal here needs to be five that's why i'm a little upset that i didn't do the the raw materials dropping off at the freight terminal as well because that would have been perfect when it comes to doing the um the engineering supplies too there because I could literally just say run the, the same orders pretty much but in reverse but it's fine it's fine I'm also sat here in the dark doing this for some reason let me just go switch a light on that's better I do miss the days of wearing a headset to record videos because it meant I could be heard no matter which way I was facing but at the same time the number of times I garroted myself with the cord every time I went to turn a light on or off. Um, it's nice to be able to just stand up and walk away. Now, obviously, a yeah, wireless headset would have fixed that problem, but you don't get the same audio quality. Okay. So, come out of the depot, into the... Well, come out of the depot, into the depot. Uh, then go to the machine shop, fill up with engineering supplies and head to the freight terminal now. I'm going to check that you are in fact kitted out with engineering supplies. 
reduce you back to that size. I'm just going to check that I did hit control when I was doing that as well. And you are going to sit there. Now I think from here I'm going to have one serve these two coal mines. One that's possibly going to come up here. So I might even have one that serves all three of these in one journey. So it does seem a bit pointless to have one for each one. I think that's a bit overkill. And then eventually when we connect up more mines down in this direction, we'll have one come over here as well. But I think right now I'm just going to have one that goes from here and serves these three. I think that will be the best way to do it. So for that reason, I'm not going to have one of these again because that's too much. Uh, I'm going to try and find one that has like 10 maybe as its size. Like a Ford Transit would be good, but they're a little on the small side. Four, four, five somehow, even though you look smaller. Eight isn't bad. You're too late. There we go. 1967, 56 miles an hour. You're perfect. Wherever you are, the Savium SM. The Savium SM Europe was the result of a collaboration between Savium and MAN, where Savium supplied cabs and MAN provided engines. Although more common in France, a few were used in the UK. Well, this is a UK inspired network, so that's good enough for me. Right. Um, I think this one we're just going to have to run it from scratch. So we're going to do service, um, no loading, no unloading, and then from here, do we take the back streets? I think we take the main roads, to be honest. That almost sounded poetic as well, I don't know why, but it did. So yeah, you're going to come out this way. Take the main roads. Right. So. And we're going to have. I mean, I'm almost tempted to say a truck every five minutes on these routes. Maybe ten on some of the more stretched out ones. But I don't know. I, I don't really know how these logistics work. I know for. For rail freight, it can be more regular. Two, three times a day. Set times apart. Things like that. But um, for, for anyone who works in the, the road logistics industry, if you'd like to get in touch and let me know how all this works, uh, I'd be very happy to hear from you, believe me. Right, so we're going to go here, and then here we're going to go up. Here, then to here, and then back down after number 16. So here, we're then going to run this way. Now, which way should we go? I'm tempted to head up this way first, then down this way, and then back this way. I think that would make sense. So let's do that. So here then, we're gonna go, so what number are you? Oh, you're number 19 at the moment, but it's gonna change. Um, we're gonna go this way. And then we're going to go this way. And then we're going to go here and here. And then down this way. So before number 26, which is this one, we're then going to go this way. Uh, and then down to here where we're going to come up to here and then to here and then before number 31 which is that one we're going to run down this way now hopefully this is all set up correctly if it is great if it isn't damn but i'm going to find that out momentarily also um a couple of episodes ago when we first did the trams, I was saying about there weren't that many people waiting. I think that was to do with the fact that we didn't actually have many routes on offer. Because since then, 
some of the roots especially uh, if I find Sanley here yeah, 134, that's not too bad. But if I then come over here, 3,000 people. 3,000 people. Uh, 1,711 going via Poplar Avenue, which I believe is that one there. Yeah. That's a lot of people. We're going to have to run more trams. Which is kind of why we're setting these things up now the way we are. Is so that in the future we can set more trams. That's not what I meant to do. I meant to click that. Um, and we know how long it takes to run a service so we know where we can slot vehicles in for it to all make sense okay set you up then so you're gonna be one you're gonna be 15 um, so I'm gonna set this up the way that I've just said where we're gonna have maybe a truck every five minutes if you're someone who works in the industry, I'm pretty certain once every five minutes is not the way that it works. Depends on the, the industry, I suppose. Trucks out of quarries, I imagine they're quite frequent. But do feel free to get in touch. Let me know how this actually works. That'd be useful. Uh, I'm going to say two minutes for these because it's not dropping off all of it, is it? It's just dropping off some of it. Um, but yeah, let me know how it works. I'll be very interested to know. Alrighty. And I think that's the last drop. From there it goes back to the depot. Excellent. And then the final thing we do today is we set the speed limit. So you're going to be 60. Drop it down to 10. I am going to set up groups for all these vehicles as well. It's just right now it was easier to, um, to, to not do that right now. Focus on, uh, on everything else. All right, 10. Also, grouping vehicles isn't the most interesting thing in the world to see, so it made more sense for me to to do that off camera. Ten, ten, and then down here. Ten. Whoops. Ten. And then uh, this one. Ten. And 10. And then I think that's it for this one until we get down to here where it's 10. So this is what I'm looking forward to seeing. If I minimize this for a second. Oops, there we go. Pop you down there. Um, it's the run from here, uh, here, sorry, around all the main roads here back to the depot basically operating at motorway speeds now this junction over here is an absolute faff there's a possibility that i might just add an extra set of slip roads here to make this more more tolerable basically um, but i did like the idea of having all the vehicles going through this part of the intersection so maybe i won't do that um but i think with the way i've got this set up now where here vehicles will double back and then head this way and then in the return vehicles head this way yeah it does work it's just a faff as i said um but yeah i'm ready to get this set up and going which means i think that's the end of this episode so i'm going to go through and group these up uh i have a method in mind for how to do that uh m4j road haulage is still up and running actually which is nice if I was to grab you, uh, we might have to use abbreviations here, but it should be possible. Where are you running? Are you still running? You are still running. Interesting. Okay. But yeah, we'll do it by commodity. So let's go. I'll do one on camera. How about that? And then you can see. So if I did this one first, which I believe is the first one. Yes. So you run from Deffingbridge Coal Mine. Uh, DFC to again I'm sure there's like designations and all sorts for this but I don't know them uh, that bridge steel mill which is going to be DSM there and if I had to ungrouped you are number 702 we have a lot of vehicles here and there we go 
and then the next one would be uh, no that's stupid that's not the right thing at all over here which is nudhead isn't it so it's n uh, so why did I do FC I don't know what FC stands for that's not right at all I think because I'm about to go watch the football I think I've just got that stuck in my head so it's uh, it's not FC it's CM there and then ungrouped 703 this one there alrighty that will do it for this episode guys uh, if I keep talking my voice is going to explode so I'm going to leave it here I'm going to pin this up here and we'll uh, we'll get all these other vehicles categorized tested and then we'll uh, populate them fully as well next episode then um, I was going to do the oil here actually but I think I might do that off camera because I don't see why that would need to be on camera I'm also checking that accepts petrol so actually bringing petrol down here as well would be a good thing and that can produce farm supplies and chemicals we, we don't actually have a use for right now so maybe we won't do that but yeah I will get um, probably close these now as well thinking about it I will get these vehicles categorized I'll do the oil off camera because I think that will be easier and then next episode, I don't actually know what we're going to be doing, but I'll find something, I'm sure. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And of course, if you're enjoying the series so far, drop those comments down below with ideas for future episodes. It really does help me out. Um, you know, viewer suggestions can form great ideas, I always find. So I'm always in favor of viewer suggestions. So do leave them down below. Uh, like I said, it really helps me out. Apart from that, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Um, that really helps me out too. If you have already subscribed to the channel, thank you guys for your continued support. Really much, very much appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and until next time, I will see you soon.